all we've heard this year is about how bad this running back class is. Everybody's like, this running back class is historically bad. It sucks. It's not any good at all. And in reality, what I think might happen on draft day and what we're going to show you today on this video is running backs could actually end up throwing a huge curveball in this year's draft. From the standpoint that if Trey Benson, if Jonathan Brooks, both guys I think are capable of doing this, if they get even second round draft capital, late, late second round draft capital, third round draft capital, I think and. I would bet that at least one running back is getting drafted in the second round this year still. Oh, yeah. And so when that happens, I mean, when, what, who have we seen go in the second round from a running back standpoint that's been notable in the last couple of years? Jonathan Taylor was a second round pick. Breeze Hall was a second round pick. Dalvin Cook back in the day was a second round pick. Javante Williams was a second round pick. J.K. Dobbins was a second round pick. Joe Mixon, Kenneth Walker was a second round pick. Cam Akers, we, I, I don't think I mentioned. Breeze, the GOAT Cam Akers. The like GOAT Cam Akers. Hall of Famer. But these are all guys that got drafted in the second round, and then you saw where they were going once it was time to start drafting in rookie drafts. I mean, we've even seen as recently as Damian Pierce, who got drafted in the fourth round, jump way up and get into the first round. James Cook in the third round jumped way up and go to the, in the tail end of the first round. So if they can get third or fourth round draft capital and jump up into the first round of Dynasty Rookie Drafts, what's going to happen if we get a second round running back up there? What's going to happen is they're going to jump up to the late first of this year's draft class, and it's going to make that 110-111 pick extremely valuable because you've already got Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy probably will still go by that point at least. Then you've got Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brock Bowers. That's eight. Brian Thomas is nine. Now, if you're thinking about who else could be there, you've got a couple different receivers. So we're at nine, solid nine. Adonai Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkey, all fringe first, second round guys. Then you've got two running backs. You have potentially, like, we have a pool of like 15 guys here almost. Not 15, 12 guys that could potentially go in the first round of the NFL draft or go in the early second in the case of the running backs and be like solid, really good picks at the end of the first round. I'm, and I'm telling you, I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a curveball thrown in this draft. And people want to look at this class. Let's look at this class. Let's look at Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks out of Texas, who, by the way, would not be going to the draft if him and his agent and his family and whoever wasn't sure that he was going to get drafted at a decent spot. Obviously, the injury is a concern, but when you're looking at Jonathan Brooks from a skill set standpoint, he hits all of the metrics that we want. When you... When you project him second round draft capital into the bakery, it gives him a pretty good score. It puts him in the tier of guys, Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook, Jameer Gibbs, Javante Williams, Christian McCaffrey. It puts him in that tier of guys. Same thing with Trey Benson. When you put Trey Benson in that second round draft capital range, it's going to elevate him up to that Brees Hall, J Christian McCaffrey, J.K. Dobbins tier. That's the kind of tier we're looking at in our analytical model created by Ryan Bread. That's the kind of tier of guys we're looking at if either of those guys get second round draft capital. Now, if they both get second round draft capital, we're talking the deepest class, like maybe I've ever drafted, like legitimately the deepest. But in terms of Jonathan Brooks, like I mentioned, coming out of Texas, Jonathan Brooks is probably going to be an RB1 on a team. He has that skill set. He has the, the plenty of potential. He, he's got the workhorse size. He's got, he's got the, most importantly, the receiving game upside to do that. And so Jonathan Brooks is a guy that absolutely could do that. But even later in the process, we've had Trey Benson come out and really emerge as like potentially an early second round pick even. I mean, a lot of people are saying that. Yeah, and I don't quite understand why after, after what we saw the running backs do, some of the running backs at the Combine, like Benson specifically, why we're still so low on this class. I think more of it could really be just because how good th this class of wide receivers is and how they're really just overshadowing the running backs. Because let's be honest, like the, the only reason last year's running back class was so hyped up was because of Bijan Robinson. This year just doesn't have Bijan Robinson. Most years, Running, the running back uh, rookie class doesn't have a Bijan Robinson from a prospect perspective, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's usually the guys going in the second round range. But uh, this is something that we learn every single year, and we have to learn it the hard way. We're low on these backs. We're low on these backs. We're low on these backs. We don't take them high enough in, in, in our, in our pre-draft rankings and our pre-draft mock drafts. And what ends up happening because of the demand of running backs right now in the NFL and in Dynasty Fantasy Football because there's so few of them, what inevitably happens? Everyone needs running back. They're going to take a running back from from the 108 to the 112. It happens in, in your almost draft every year. It happens. It's it's easy. So like, let let me just read to you the top 10 dynasty running backs right now in 
dynasty fantasy football. You got Bijan at the top. Gibbs, Brees Hall, CMC, standard. JT, standard. Achan, questions, but standard. Kyron Williams came out of nowhere. Saquon Barkley, ETN. At running back 10 is Kenneth Walker, who's sharing a backfield with Zach Charbonnet. You don't think that when Trey Benson goes second round that I will automatically rank him higher than Kenneth? He's automatically a top 10 dynasty running On back. On keep trade cut, if Trey Benson goes second round, he's, he's RB6, probably. Mm-hmm. RB6, you yep. think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're I, getting, I take him, you're getting I the take dynasty over, RB6 at rookie yeah. pick, what, oh, yeah. 110? I take him over HN. Well, Yeah. Absolutely, you do. I think people now, though, would would question that. They'd be like, ah, I don't know about that because HN, you know, had such a good year last year, and we have questions with Benson and, and his injury history and all this stuff. Which let the draft capital answer those questions for you with Benson. Yeah. If Benson gets that kind of draft capital, the injuries are not a concern. It's the same thing with like Michael Penix. A lot of people are like, okay, Michael Penix might not be able to withstand, you know, the injury stuff. Blah blah blah. If NFL teams are confident enough that he can do that, he probably mm-hmm. it's probably enough reassurance for you to be able to draft him on your dynasty team. Your rookie drafts are this week or next week, most likely, and what you probably need is A, a team blueprint, which it looks like this, and is a comprehensive multi-year Whoa. plan for your dynasty team that we recommend you get before the rookie draft. We've been re- recommending this all off season long, and we'll get it to you before your rookie draft, guaranteed. So sign up, flockfantasy.com slash domain. Link is in the description in the comments. If you sign up, you'll get a team blueprint before the draft, and you also get to chat with us during your rookie drafts one-on-one in our DMs, making sure that we're examining all options, making the best picks for your team, making sure we're taking the best value, taking advantage of when people are zigging, we're going to be zagging, all of that and more. Rookie draft guide, you can use database, all of it, flockfantasy.com slash domain. Make sure you use code domain when you sign up and choose the mother flock tier. Let's get back to it. Now, yeah. beyond those two guys. Well, I, I was going to say, be, beyond those two guys, I kind of have something that I want to address here because I cannot tell you how much consistent criticism we've gotten in our videos, in our rankings videos specifically, for not having a guy like Blake Corum in them. Let me just say that that beyond Brooks and Benson, and this should apply to almost every single running back class from here on out, it is 100% draft capital dependent. 100%. For every single one of these running backs, Blake Corum, he is not consistently in the top 24 of our Dynasty rookie rankings because we don't know. And neither do you. It doesn't matter how much I like him. I really, honestly, I like Blake Corum a lot. I think he has good vision. I don't think he's the most athletic running back that we've ever seen. But I think he's a guy that, given the right situation in the NFL, could potentially translate just because of his... Honestly, is on field IQ. Like I, I think he's a very good runner of the football. There's a reason he was the number one guy at Michigan. Does that change the way that I'm going to rank him before the NFL draft? No. If the NFL takes him day two, then I will adjust my rankings. But until then, why would I take a shot on a guy who didn't declare early, who wasn't hyper productive his final year when he honestly should have been? And hasn't showcased a ridiculous amount of receiving upside. The same thing applies for Bucky Irving. We have a lot of thresholds here in the bakery, which is done by Ryan Bread and a huge comp guy. But Bucky Irving is kind of in this in this range as well. Jalen Wright, Estime Irving, Marshawn Lloyd, and Blake, Blake Corum. We've been vocal about Blake Corum. He kind of makes the tail end of our list just because of his receiving upside. But with a guy like Bucky Irving, like not only are you betting on a size outlier at the running back position, you, you're betting on a guy who... Not only a small, but but didn't even get close to the 40 time that we were expecting at the combine. Does that mean he's dead in the water? No. No. But if he goes in the fifth round, <laughs> I'm probably not going out of my way to take him. Yeah. And, and honestly, on the flip side of that, you've got guys like Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright, a guy who impressed at the combine, showed his athletic ability, could get third or fourth round draft capital. And if he gets a good enough landing spot when he goes in the third or fourth round, you're going to see him go early second. Yep. You will, because yeah. because of the athleticism, because of the hype, and again, because we can have third, fourth round running backs now that come into the NFL, get drafted, and have a role. How many I mean, how many teams do we have now? Kyron Williams, a, a late round guy that has a starting spot. Isaiah Pacheco, a late round guy that has a starting spot. Damian Pierce, we just saw, a late round guy that has a starting spot. Even you could qualify, I mean, Ramondre Stevenson was like that for the longest time. A late round guy who had a starting spot, yeah. right? I and mean, generally, who are those guys? Those are the guys who at least to an extent, meet the size and production profile in college, and they, they've shown some sort of 
promise in the past. And who, who are those guys for me? I mean, for me, it's Audric Estime. If he goes fourth or fifth round, I'll take a shot on him because he'll he'll be super cheap and super affordable. Audric Estime is there. Jalen Wright is there. Braylon Allen has yeah. many questions of his own. But many. Braylon Allen, there are a lot of people that are really high on Braylon Allen. A lot of people are really high on Braylon Allen. Personally, I've had my ups and downs with him. I was like, okay, I really like this guy. And I'm like, eh, he analytically sucks and he doesn't meet our per reception threshold. And then I was like, oh, actually, he does meet the outlier thresholds, but, the, but it's hard to predict outliers. But you haven't even talked about Marshawn Lloyd yet. Marshawn Lloyd is a guy that has a very complete skill set that if he goes somewhere in the third, I think he's probably a fourth round guy. If he goes in the third, like, I'll take him early second oh, all yeah. day. But if he goes fourth round still gets a really good landing spot if he goes to the Raiders if Marshawn Lloyd goes to the Raiders I draft the frick out of Marshawn Lloyd because Marshawn Lloyd is better than Zamir White hands down not even close not even close to me yep. so you're talking about it doesn't really matter the draft capital because again we're talking about running back draft capital and it has proved not to matter over the last couple of years so let's say Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson I think in our opinion are going to get at the worst third round draft capital at the absolute worst so you have two, <laughs> two I'd be shocked if Benson fell to the third I'd be shocked but here's the thing how many running backs from each class do we actually have like hard pan out? Last year was a little bit an outlier because we had Bijan, Jameer Gibbs, and we had well, Devon we Chan. We, we haven't even seen the long term outlook of these guys either, honestly. Like we we still don't know for sure with twenty twenty three. Sure, from year one to year two, yeah, they maintained or increase in value. That's true. Yeah, uh, twenty twenty two, Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker, and then you had Isaiah Spiller was the third running back in the bakery. Rashad White ended up panning out, but he was a third round guy, right? Mm -hmm. James Cook ended up panning out, but he was further down the list. And some of these guys in here, look at 2022 as an example. Tyler Algier had value and increase in value because of the landing spot, not because of the draft capital. Tyler Algier, fifth round draft capital. Remember how valuable he was in Dynasty, right? Okay, Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford, you could have, I had a Jerome Ford for Josh Downs trade in my inbox this season because he had a starting spot. Zamir White, look how valuable Zamir White, who is the 11th ranked running back in this class in the bakery, look how valuable he is. I mean, Ty Chandler. Kyron Williams is down here 13th. I, I I don't know what else to say except to say that the running backs that you're talking about on the like fringe outside levels of these class are just as good as these running backs here that all at some point in time have had and maintained dynasty value, at least to the point where you can draft them and then offload them for value win. Uh, Damian Pierce was in this class as well. So you have... Oh, man... Hall, Walker, White, Robinson, Cook, Pierce, Algier, Ford, Zamir White, Kyron Williams. That is from the 2022 class, a class where it didn't have anybody in Bijan's tier. It only had two, pe two people in the green tier, in the second tier, and only two people, only two running backs in this yellow tier, this third tier, where this year we have one and two as well. Same type of class. You had 10 running backs who were dynasty relevant. 10. 10 of them. And when you're talking about 30 teams, most of them running committee backfields now. So do the math. You've got roughly 50 to 60, at least somewhat fantasy running backs right now. Or dynasty relevant at the very least because of the long-term outlook. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that you don't think at least like four or five of these guys are going to hit that point? What, what this really comes down to and what we need to adjust in our draft strategies going into this week is the fact that when these running backs get good draft capital and get good landing spots, they're going to jump up board. So be prepared for that. You could get good value other places or you could get good value here. But also because of the value at other positions this year and because people are looking at this as such a bad running back class, I am taking every shot on every running back I can get in the early mid third all day long. Why? Because at running back, you see more often than any other position, these guys becoming at least somewhat dynasty value relevant. And when you're talking about getting value wins for your team, this position in a rookie draft is the one that's going to do it for you right now. Mm hmm. Yep. And the public perception makes it so much better because, oh, this class sucks. Oh, this class isn't any good. That's fine. I will gladly take Audric Estime at the 3-8. Gladly. So I hope that kind of sheds some light on that. I mean, I, I could go down the list. 2021, ETN, Javante Williams, Najee Harris, Michael Carter was relevant, Ramondre Stevenson, Trey Sermon at one time was relevant, Khalil Herbert, we've been hanging on to that one for how long now, right? <laughs> Kenneth Gainwell, Chuba Hubbard, relevant right now as we speak, Elijah Mitchell, that's 10. Deion Jackson, even there for a minute, had a little bit of value. Yeah. So, so that's 10. 2020, JT, Dobbins, Akers, Gibson, Swift, CEH, Zach Moss, you just saw that one last year, AJ Dillon, 
TJ Dallas is fringe, but but you could <laughs> technically say DJ Dallas. So that's at eight at least, even not counting person. him. So eight, 10, and 10, and you're talking about 2020, 2021, and 2022. With 2023, too, too early to call, but even 2023 so far, and then I'll let you go. Robinson, Gibbs, Charbonnet, HN, Spears, Tank Bigsby, maybe not, but Kendra Miller, Roshan Johnson, Chase Brown, now, one year later, Evan Hole, not really, but could be a guy here in the future that ends up having some value if yeah. they don't end up signing anybody else. Yeah, I don't, think, injury, I don't like think they. Game, I don't think they will. Uh, Keaton Mitchell had some dynasty value there for a minute. We had so many Keaton Mitchell questions on our show. Even from last year, where we've only seen one year of their production play out, we've had at least seven guys be dynasty relevant. Again, you're going to have that this year. The difference is you're going to get them cheaper. Yeah, and I kind of want to look at some of the. Let's keep it. Let, let's keep it on the low end of what could potentially happen. Okay. So let's just assume that you know Trey Benson goes in the middle of the second round. Okay. okay. So I'm I'm looking at really interesting landing spots here, like the L.A. Chargers. Who do, please don't tell me that they went and signed J.K. Dobbins. Like that's a relevant signing. Okay. That's not a relevant signing. They have Gus Edwards, and that's it. They could absolutely use a running back like Trey Benson. Who are some other guys here that that, that seem like attractive? I mean, just landing even spots? go to the top. The Panthers, like the. the the Raiders, I know they have a ton of need at other positions, but that's absolutely a possibility at 44. The Giants? The Giants. Who's the Giants running back right now? Well, I mean, we know the answer. Singletary. Who it's they Singletary. Pay. They pay. Yeah, but, but at the same time, the second he gets drafted over, he loses all his value. Exactly. And that's possible mm-hmm. at this point. Yep. I mean, you, um, had, you had just as, had a, As much as we like Zach Moss, who got paid on a two-year contract, he's not necessarily Bengals. a guy that I'd count on being a bell cow where he's getting 100% of the carries. He has had some durability issues the last couple of years. And um, if Benson went to the Cincinnati Bengals in the middle of the second round, That'd you don't legit. think everyone would be <laughs> running to the bank to go pick him up in the late first. How about 56, the Dallas Cowboys, who will be using that pick on Jonathan Brooks? It's literally like, it, it's so it, obvious at it, this it, point. They're going to be spending a second or a third round pick on a running back, and it is most likely Jonathan Brooks. Okay. So, I mean, eat dark horse, dark horse, the dark Buccaneers. Horse. Because I think the Buccaneers, maybe they wait till the third, fourth round. I know they have hmm. other, I know they have other places that team need. But again, I'm not so Rashad, guessing Rashad here. Rashad White's a very um, well. You know who would make the most sense for the Bucks because Rashad White is less um, efficient on the ground, more efficient in the passing game. So Allen or Allen or Estime. Estime. Yeah. So that could be round three. But I'm and not I'd ge- like that for both of them. I'm not because just, Rashad White and Leonard Fournette were both able to be productive at the same time. I'm not just guessing that they're going to take a running back. I mean, they put the headline up for me, Luke. They, they've straight up said that they're going to take a running back. Todd Bull said it. He said it. So it's not me like, why would the Bucks take a running back? Like, At some point, they will. Mm-hmm. Okay, so take away from this video. There are people are really only projecting maybe one or two, max three running backs from this class to be dynasty relevant at any point in time. We know better than that from recent trends. So what we're going to do, they're zigging. What are we going to do? Zag. We're going to zag. And we're going to take running backs, especially when we get to late second and on. We are going to take the value where running backs push other things down or even take the running backs 111-112. Trey Benson, second round draft capital. I mean, you're talking about a guy who gets Brees Hall comps, Brees Hall size comps, Brees Hall athleticism comps, and is going to get the same draft capital? Why did... Why did we hype up Brees Hall that much if we weren't going to do this something for some a prospect that's really similar? So again, don't let anybody fool you. Everybody wants to talk down on this running. Back. Is this running back class like one of the better ones? No. no, it wouldn't even say it's it's not great, but it's not horrible. And even when it is horrible, you are going to have random running backs have random dynasty value because of the way dynasty is played. There you go. Make sure you drop a like on this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't and if you play dynasty. Make sure you tune in. This week for all of your pre- and post-draft coverage for Dynasty, we're going to have rankings, mock drafts out right away after the draft. Everything is going to be right there for you to have at your fingertips as you go through your rookie draft. Also be on the lookout for our rookie draft strategy video this week. It will probably be the best video we've ever done. We have some incredible research, so be on the lookout for that. Make sure you get a blueprint, flockfancy.com slash domain. We'll get it to you this week. If you sign up this week, we'll get it to you before the rookie draft. And Nathan laughs because he knows how much work that's going to be. But we're going to do it. And also, you get one-on-one. Just, you say I'm laughing. I know. I'm and crying. you're dying inside. Right. Yeah. You get one-on-one rookie draft advice from us as well. You can be chatting with us during your rookie draft. So appreciate you guys. We'll see you later.